Adobe Lightroom is a really powerful program, but one thing it's not very good at is its keyboard shortcuts. Now, it definitely has a bunch of keyboard shortcuts, but most of those are just something in order to open a thing and then probably use it with a mouse. So you'd be able to use, you hit like a key and that would open up the develop module and that would open up the crop tool or something like that. But then you would still need to use your mouse. Now, if you're using something like say a laptop, that might not be the best tool. And it's kind of a pain just because trackpads are kind of tricky to get them super fine tuned, super dialed. And even if you're not, it's just, annoying to be able to, to be jumping your hand back and forth between a keyboard and back and all that kind of stuff. So there's some other tools in the market that I think are a little bit better. It might be something worth looking into. Um, one thing that a lot of people have used is something called a loop deck. Now, these are super cool because they put all of the stuff, all the sliders and stuff, you can set them to them to make changes how you would like to in Lightroom by just moving dials and stuff. The downside of that is that you need to have this extra tool, which definitely is like having a whole extra keyboard now, which if I'm using a laptop, I don't want to bring another keyboard. Like I don't even bring like a peripheral mouse with me. I'm still using the trackpad. I don't want to have another keyboard. And even more so you <clears throat> look like a DJ. Drop the shadows. Beyond that, I also just don't want a peripheral because like I, when I'm editing things, I generally want to be as close to horizontal as possible. Like this is a video of how I edit weddings. For myself, I've always preferred to use integrated keyboard shortcut programs. Um, the first one that I used was something called the Visco Keys, which was back when Visco was just a preset company and less of a personality trait. And then I used a tool called Pfix. And that brings us to Power Keys, which is the tool that I am currently using in order to do keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom on my computer. Now, if you're watching this video and at any point you're like, this is awesome and I would like to use this program, there's a link down below. And then if you use the code JTobiason, you get 10 bucks off your subscription. That's it. I'm not getting like prepaid for this video. There's no screen or anything. I just think this is super awesome. And you know, I get a cutback because it is an affiliate link, but uh, it's a, I really honestly think the power keys was really great. So let's dive into the program really quick. So once it's installed, you'll see here that there are three sections of power keys that you can work through. Sliders, shortcuts, and presets. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory here. The sliders be able to go and you can map to adjust the various sliders inside of Lightroom just by hitting keys on your keys on your keyboard. You really can map pretty much any slider. I mostly use the ones that affect the basic tool, things like temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, that kind of the more basics and stuff. You can set whatever you want. If you would like to adjust the red saturation, you can set up a high key out of those and you can put however many modifiers and stuff as you want. So you could hold command, control, shift, six to make those changes, something like that. So you can map to everything. That just becomes a lot of things to try to remember. And I know that my brain can't remember those. I mean. I feel like I have stuff mapped that I've already forgotten and then I keep, I open up power keys and I look and I was like, oh yeah, I did set that up. That's right. I forgot that I have, you know, a thing for vibrance already preset. I should be using that more often. Um, so I kind of don't go crazy, but you can see pretty much any slider that you could like, that you would, could conceivably use is available here within version 3.0 of power keys. So let's see it in action. I'm going to slide over here and open up Lightroom here and let's just look at, um, Let's just go to this random photo here of a couple kissing on a ferry boat during an elopement. So dating all the way back to power keys, I actually basically use the same mappings that I did all the way back then because it was just what I learned and it's what they kind of came defaulted as. And so I've kept it all the way through. If you find those interesting and would like to be able to use the same keyboard shortcuts, they are available as a link down below. Also a default one that comes from power keys themselves is also available. So take whatever fits for you. That said, my goal is to do as much of the slider movement with my left hand because I do, this, again, this is a light, Lightroom is a mouse program. So there's a lot of times when you really do need to have a mouse. And so I try to keep it so my right hand can either be on a trackpad or on a mouse if I'm using a desktop computer. And then for as much as possible, my left hand is the one that's actually making slider adjustments. So this photo here, we can look at it right here and it is very dark. So for me, it's the D and the F key are what adjust the brightness of it. So I'm just gonna hit the F key a bunch of times and it gets brighter and then I get the D key and it gets darker. You might've seen in there, I can hold the shift key and that actually doubles how fast it's adjusting those in there. Then also I think it's the option key goes half as fast. Honestly, I don't ever use that, but it's an option for you. Um, so you can hit the 
that increases the contrast. Let's increase, make bring up the shadows, down the blacks, and then make it a little bit warmer. Something kind of like that. Now it's a super basic adjustment, just making those right in there. And like I said, you can make whatever adjustments you want. One thing that's important to note is that if you are, if you use something called solo mode, which as you can see, these are over here. And if you, if I click on one, it closes another section of the develop module. That is just a way to keep it so that, especially on a smaller screen, like a laptop, you're only seeing the things you need to, but it won't, the buttons won't work for a section that's not visible. So, if you're gonna be jumping up and down, just know that you either have to click back onto basic in order to be able to adjust the exposure. Like I can hit the F as many times right there, but that exposure is not coming up. I either have to click back off or turn off solo modes so that that stays open the whole time. But if you have something like your, a mask open or the crop tool open, the it actually still would open because technically that hasn't, like you scroll down, that hasn't actually closed the basic tool. It's just kind of a weird quirk of Lightroom. The next section of power keys over here is the shortcuts. Now, this is one that just brings you two particular tools or does particular things that are not a slider, but just kind of a very fine tuned, all kinds of stuff. So you could have something like open in Photoshop. That actually sounds super useful, especially as like the generative AI of Photoshop is the thing I'm using all the time to get rid of power lines and stuff out of the backgrounds. So to have one key that just popped that open, that sounds great. So what if I just had, so let's say for, or if I wanted to put it in there so I could open Photoshop, I just click on there and hit option O and then I would be able to set that. So now if I wanted to open that photo in Photoshop, I just hit option O and it would pop it right open. Um, but there are so many different things in here. I have no, I don't have time to go through them all. And I, as you can see right here, haven't really set most of them to be those things. But there's a couple things that I do find are super useful that I do want to note. For one would be like the J key is what I have that opens the crop um, window. So if I just open J, it hits the crop. And then I also have the O key set so that it straightens the photo out. So I'm gonna reset it in there, J O enter and that's already straightened out. I don't know if it did a very good job of the auto straightening on this particular photo, um, but there's, and then I also hit command J and that resets the crop of it. Those are ones that I just end up using all the time. The other ones that I find to be super duper duper useful is that I have set the comma and that goes in at copy settings. You can choose what settings you want it to be. The paste pastes those settings. I'm gonna stop in there. So you'd be like pasting from previous. Oh look, it looks like a previous version of this thing that I did. I'm just gonna replace those. Let's see what previous me did here. Now it looks like I had some AI settings built into there. That's a little bit too warm, so let's cool it down a little bit and then bring down a little more contrast. Something kind of right in there. Doesn't look too bad. And then also, let's see, go to the next photo right in here. Then I have the slash, which is the one that just copies the thing. It just takes everything from previous and puts it right in there. And then uh, lastly, if, let's say I had a group of photos in here, I could just hit all those and I have command period and that would sync all the settings from this one with other things. And you could go in here, hit replace and it would put all those same settings across that number of photos and they'd be ready to go really nice and quickly. Then beyond that, I also have the match total exposure set to P. Those are the ones that I find just that combo right there. If you just set up those few things, it makes the editing in Lightroom so, so, so much faster. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is kind of silly because I use AI editing. I use Imogen or Aftershoot or something like that, and my photos look just like they come out looking awesome. And so, like, I totally see how you're saying that maybe minor adjustments might be super helpful, but is there really a helpful tool for me? I obviously can't answer for you, but I don't, at this point, my when I've run things through AI, they haven't come out quite perfect yet. And so I've ended up needing to go back through and do minor adjustments. And so maybe it's not doing you know, major editing off the bat, it's getting things pretty close, but the ability to just uh, hit a couple buttons and adjust the white balance or hit a couple buttons and adjust the exposure as I'm kind of cranking through the photos really quickly has been really helpful. One thing that I haven't figured out how to make the AI tools very well is to be able to differentiate between which photos I would like to be in black and white and which ones I'd like to be in color. Now I could go through and I could spend a bunch of time before I run them through an AI program saying like these are the ones for color and these are the ones for black and white. But honestly, in the amount of time that that takes for me to make those decisions and then run it through AI, it's not any faster than I would because I have the last tool in here and that's presets. And so with this, I now can have command one, two, three, four. You see right up here, I have Carol. That's my main, like my main uh, preset. Greg and then Christina, which is very similar to Carol. It just kind of has like a lighter shadow thing. And then even like an AI preset right in there is set in there. 
So for me, if it comes out of AI and it looks pretty good, but I have two very similar photos and I wanna make one of those black and white, as I'm just kind of scrolling through and checking, it's really quickly just to slap that Greg preset on there, which is my black and white preset. And so then I have two totally different photos. So let's look at that in practice here. I'm just gonna open up, um, let's just look at this photo here from Spain that I took a long time ago. So if I hit Command-1, that applies my Carol preset, and that looks pretty good. Oh, that shadow looks a little bit dark, so I'm gonna raise that in the air. Let's also warm it up just a little bit, just in there. Well, I don't know, let's try it out. Let's see what the, the daytime preset, what Christina looks like. Uh, not a huge difference, that looks pretty good. Well, let's make it black and white. Boom, Greg, black and white, and right in there. And all this, you still see, my right hand is up here. It's just my left hand that's doing all this stuff. And then I can go on to the next photo and Again, I can just copy from the previous. I don't like that, I want it to be in color. Command one, we're gonna apply my Carol preset. A Little bit more shadows, boom, boom, boom. And then let's add the silver reflector AI preset in here, which just kind of makes people pop, boom. That was pretty fast. And that's really where I see the value of this thing, is that the ability to use a program like Power Keys just makes using Lightroom so much faster and so much better and as we use more and more AI presets and AI programs and stuff, those are probably gonna be useful. Those are probably gonna be necessary, but at the same point, I don't think that any of those are quite ready to fully replace my own need to actually do stuff in Lightroom. And Power Keys is the tool that's become increasingly powerful and just really good at doing those things as quickly as possible. Also beyond it, it's just like the way it maps is way better than any of the previous programs I've done. Everything is so fast, it's so snappy, and the program just like latches on in a way that um, there's no lag. Like even on my older computer, it still works really, really well. So yeah, give it a shot. Uh, follow the link down below and you can download it for a 30 day free trial. And if you do, once again, use that code JTobiasen for 10 bucks off your subscription. Let me know in the comments below what feature you're most excited about and thanks for watching. I'll see you around.